is NBA Showtime, the 1998 NBA All-Star Game. Here's your host, Anna Storm. The world's greatest athletes visit the world's most famous arena. The 48th NBA All-Star Game comes to Madison Square Garden in New York City. Just a few moments ago, the Western Conference All-Stars took the court. Four of the 12 Western Stars, including 19-year-old Kobe Bryant, are from the Los Angeles Lakers. But the star of stars is still Michael Jordan of the Chicago Bulls. Despite 101 fever yesterday, he will play tonight in what could be his final All-Star appearance. All right, I'm here with uh, Michael Jordan. Michael, I know that I'm out of that line. I know that you were not feeling well coming into this game, but the last time you felt like that, you scored 38 points, seven <laughs> rebounds. How do you feel today? I feel a lot better. You know, I've been I've been laid up for the last couple of days, and uh, you know, I'm just happy that I can participate. Uh, yesterday, I was feeling really bad. I didn't think I'd be able to play today, but I got some antibiotics, and you know, today I feel a lot better. All right, there's been a lot of talk about this being your last All-Star game. How do you feel about that? It very well can be. I think, uh, you know, right now in Chicago, they're looking to make a change and go a different direction with the coaching staff, which I think affects me a lot. And uh, it really doesn't leave me with many choices either. You know, I can stay and start all over again and with the new coach in, or, you know, I can basically say that's it. And, you know, right now in my mind, I'm, th I'm thinking that's it. Well, one of the things that you told me is that you really want to play another year. Oh, I would love to play, as long as everything's intact. I mean... You know, to ask me to start all over with the coach with a new philosophy, a whole new system, you know, with a with an unknown situation. I'm I am i am pretty much aware of what Phil does and his and, and the way that he respects the players and we respect them. Now to make that change at this stage of my career is you know, I'm not ready to step into an unknown. All right, if this is your last all-star game, go out and just light it up. <laughs> I'm gonna have a good time. All right, good luck, man. Let's go over to Peter Vesey. Pete. <laughs> I'm here with Grant Hill. Grant, we all know what Piston management felt about Doug Collins. They thought he was responsible, they fired him. As the team's franchise player, how responsible are you for the team's 22 and 25 record? I mean, I'm partially to blame. We're all to blame. Uh, unfortunately, in this line of work, the coach is the one that uh, gets the blood of the blame. But myself, all the players, we all can play better. Uh, I think we're better than our record. And uh, I'm just excited about the second half of the year uh, going out there and trying to prove that we are better. Can the season be salvaged? Or do you get a sense that the uh, organization is looking ahead to next year? You know, we're still trying to get in the playoffs. You know, we're mathematically, we're still in it. Uh, we can play better basketball, like I said. And uh, I think we're all excited about just looking forward to, to finishing up strong and trying to get in the postseason. Okay. Thank you, Grant. Now we're going over to Jim Gray, who's with Kobe Bryant. All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter. I'm here with Kobe, 19 years old. Most guys are trying to pick out a major, find a summer job. What's this moment represent to you to play in the All-Star game at 19 years of age? It means the world to me. This is my first All-Star game, playing here in New York City with all these great basketball players. It's an incredible feeling. I'm glad it's finally arrived. How are your nerves? I'm a little nervous. Mr. Bryant, I wonder if you'd mind signing an autograph for me. Oh, so sure. nice to see a man with dignity will actually sign an autograph and go on television. Instead of those bad men like Jack Nicholson, he won't even go on TV. You brought your top fan. What, you got any advice for him? For Kobe Bryant? Yes. Go heat up. Right. Heat up and get loose. <laughs> <laughs> That'll settle your nerves a little, huh? Oh, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. It's an L.A. family thing. You know, we both migrated to New York for this weekend. All right, Kobe. Good luck. Thank you. Michael Jordan, he only needs 40 points to tie Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the greatest scorer in the history of the NBA All-Star Game. But Michael's under so much pressure because of being sick and the turmoil of Chicago's management situation. There's also so much hype about Kobe Bryant and the speculation about the future of the game. So Larry, he has asked his players to make sure that Michael, who's taking care of all of them, that today they take care of him. He needs 41 to break the record. I look for this overmatched E-Squad to be really inspired by passion ball with Michael right in the middle of everything. It would have to be quite an outburst because obviously you don't play regular season minutes, at least not usually, in an All-Star game. The All-Star game single season record 42 by Wilt Chamberlain back in 1962, the year he averaged 50 a game. Michael already has the highest All-Star average ever, 21 plus in 10 previous games. 
but Kareem played in 18 All-Star games and thus has the highest overall point total. And there you see Kobe Bryant in the foreground, the man many have dubbed the next Michael Jordan. Of course, that's a bit silly. There will be no next Michael Jordan, but the combination of skill and flair that Kobe Bryant brings to the game has already captivated the country. Kobe definitely brings the skill and the flair. You know, he's a very exciting player. He's entertaining. The thing that I'm amazed at at a very young age is he already understands how to entertain the fans. And he and Michael Jordan have promised us in their interviews that they will put on the show here today. East won last year at Cleveland, 132-120. Glenn Rice of the Hornets with 26 points in the game and a record 20 in one period was the MVP. Now, Michael Jordan comes to this All-Star game without Scottie Pippen and without Phil Jackson. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can get into his rhythm because Anthony Hardaway is a not known for passing but more so for scoring. <laughs> Here is Michael, the head fake on Garnett. Over him into the lane with the game's first two. So much for being sick. Yeah, I think he's okay. He's got the bounce. He's got the skill. He's ready to put on the show here today. The countdown at 39 early. <laughs> Guarded, by the way, by a defender who's 6'11", Kevin Garnett. Peyton, Peyton into shot. For the turnaround on the baseline to tie it at two. Well, you got the competition starting early. Everybody's out competing. Everybody wants to put on the show here today. Shaq with the fadeaway, Jay. Not known for that, but the players are trying to do things that they normally wouldn't do. Hill rolls it home. He's averaging better than 21 a game. Always a threat to put up a triple-double for the Pistons. Nobody has missed yet, Bob. I think that's a lot to do with the fact that so many great players are here. There's the first miss of the day. Kobe Bryant, the whole pass by Shaq. But intercepted by Kemp, who's confronted by O'Neal. The ball out of bounds to the east. When Michael Jordan curls around off this down screen. He freezes his switched off defender. And he gets right in the lane. There's no way Kevin Garnett has the lateral mobility to stay with Michael Jordan. Peyton on Hardaway. Matumbo with the screen and Penny with the bucket. Everybody wants their A game tonight. Now let, let, let's see now if they can increase the tempo. What normally happens in all-star games is that they, there's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Larry Bird has a stress passing. What we used to do in the 80s, let's see if they play together as a team and try to increase the, comp the competitive level that's happening out there. Hey, with the spin, Bryant. Kobe's first All-Star hoop. It's amazing, Bob, when you watch Kobe Bryant practice and, and, and work on his game. That ball goes right through the middle of the hoop. There's no luck to those shots. He does have trouble finishing off the dribble, though. Hill on the drive for his second basket. The East leads it 8-4. to four. Here's Garnett and the kid, as they call him, in Minnesota. Everybody wants to see, is waiting to see what Gary Payton and Nick Van Exel has planned when they get into the game. They say they're going to do something special for us, and I want to see what type of tricks Gary Payton got up his sleeve. Kemp's turnaround spins out. Payton with the rebound. Shaq into the lane, over Matumbo, the ball knocked away and out of bounds. As you know, as well as anyone, Isaiah, even more so than in a regular game, a point guard in an all-star game holds the fortunes of his teammates <laughs> in his hands and how the Paytons and the Hardaways and the Van Exels and the others decide to distribute the ball determines the outcome and the MVP. Oh, you better believe that those guys were treated well this weekend. Everybody probably took them out to dinner, was buying them gifts and everything because they wanted the ball. They're begging. Malone missed, but at the other end comes back for the steal. Garnett had to go up and wasn't in position to, help to handle the pass from Payton. A little schoolyard play, and Payton has it as they set it up. He misses a three badly, didn't draw iron. Hill backing away from Garnett. Bring it back to Jordan. Hardaway. And Penny, who's played only 17 games this year, missed almost two months with a knee injury, but voted as a starter by the fans, hits again. Shaq muscling it up over Matumbo. Matumbo doing a very good job of forcing Shaq to the fadeaway. Shaq intent always on getting to that basket. The thing that I'm impressed about is both teams seem to be playing together. There's a lot of passing. There's a lot of moving. They're cutting on offense. And the teams seem to be running their lanes wide also on the fast break. And the game's first whistle 
from Bob Delaney working the game with Hugh Hollins and Bernie Fryer. A Laker connection here. Kobe Bryant along that baseline off the back screen by Shaquille O'Neal. That terrific ability to hit that spot up shot and then shot when he is that deep. Pretty nice defense by Dikembe Mutombo, but that fadeaway jumper is going down. But Shaq is from this Newark area. He was over in Newark yesterday uh, visiting all his family over there. He's got an uncle, Stanley Harrison, who's uh, the brother of his father. And uh, very, very sick in the hospital. It's a, it's a sad story. Shaq did not, not able to appreciate and enjoy all the festivities because of the sickness of his uncle there in the hospital. One of two for Shaq at the line. Jordan from the head of the key. And Malone has the rebound. Pegging it ahead for Bryant. Picked up by Garnett. Back to Kobe. Oh, see that? And Hill comes nice. away. See, this is the game where you want to have a lot of oohs and a lot of ahs. <laughs> Kemp from Jordan. Fouled as he went up. You know, it don't matter if you make the shot in a game like this. This is where you want to try everything that you can ever imagine. So this is when you want the fans to go, ooh. Ah. You know, Sean Kemp came to my camp when he was 17 years old, and the size that he is now today is the exact size that he was at 17. <laughs> he was really a man amongst boys, and he played with the same type of intensity. So you have Kobe coming down right here. Kevin Garnett's give him the ooh, and Kobe comes back with a ah. But no. <laughs> Some time in these games, though, there's the opportunity to make a simple play, and they try to put a little bit more on it, and it backfires. That time, Kobe unable to convert. Well, the timing is on, man. You know, when you got great players like this playing out on the court, it usually takes them about five minutes to adjust to get used to each other's timing and rhythm. Kemp. The East by five at 14-9. Here's Peyton, who had 17 points and 10 assists and a losing cause for the West last year in Cleveland. O'Neal screening for him. He gets it back on the lob, draws a double team. A much better passer than a lot of people realize. This time he tries to take it to the hoop, but he's bumped by Matumbo for the foul. See, this is what Shaq, you know, normally wouldn't do. But in an all-star game, he wants to take it between his legs and go behind his back. This year's Lakers with Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel, Kobe Bryant, and Shaquille O'Neal. The first team since the 1983 Philadelphia 76ers to send four of their players to the all-star game. So you got Shaq out on the perimeter now, isolated against Matumbo. <laughs> he, he's trying all the, the moves that he dreamed about when he was a guard growing up. He went between his legs. He just tried to give him a Steve Smith hitch and go move. Hill misses. Kemp rebounds, but loses it. And Garnett is on the end line. It'll belong to the East. A timeout with 6.55 to play in the first. And the East up by five. The greatest. Muhammad Ali. And this is the crowd responding to Ali's image on the Jumbotron overhead. As we come back, Jordan takes the quick inbound pass, and his shot rattles out. Here comes Bryant ahead of the field. Reverse slam. Ooh, See, that was an ooh and an ah and a clap. See, that's what I'm talking about. In an all-star game, you want to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Kobe understands at a very young age how to entertain. The great outlet pass started it by Shaq. A lot of centers don't outlet the ball anymore. They want to be involved in their own offense. But Shaq knows how important it. Kobe's electricity is to the team. Setting him up, the delivery, the spin. The, what's that, the helicopter? No, that, that's called a 360 no. in your face <laughs> slam dunk at 19. To, to, to be 19. That, that's when the defenders run to the other end of the court when they see him coming like that at you. Oh, yeah. Nobody <laughs> wants to play against him nowadays. Everybody is looking at Kobe saying, oh, Kobe's coming to town. Kobe's coming to town. The fans and everybody screaming. Nobody wants anything to do with this kid. There's a problem with the clock, and that's the reason for the delay, giving us a chance to look at Kobe again. So you see Kobe gets it here. He plants, he jumps, he spins, and that's the slam dunk in your face. Last year was Kobe's first All-Star game as a visitor, even though his parents grew up in the NBA. This is Hardaway to the left hand, and Matumbo with the follow. But at the NBA 50 celebration last year, 
Kobe told us, he said that he learned from Earl Monroe and Tiny Archibald that patience is the ultimate key to his long-term success. He had a fabulous time in Cleveland last year, as we all do. Except maybe in the All-Star game. He looked a little impatient there that last trip down the floor. He's got the ball in his hands again. To Garnett. Back to Kobe! See, that's the ooh. Kobe and Garnett. You know, two of the youngest the superstars keying up, eyeing each other. As they get their tempo and they get their rhythm, the game and the pace will start to quicken. Now they need to push it up the court and keep pushing it and keep pushing it. Kobe with six. Hill just to step inside the three-point line, and he has half a dozen. So you got to make another spectacular play coming back. You can't come down and set it up right now. You just had a spectacular play. Now you got to get the fans into it. Peyton's pass is intercepted by Kemp. Here's Jordan on the wing, slapped away by Peyton. Gary Peyton is doing everything he can to set Shaq up. This time it's Garnett, and now Shaq. <laughs> against Matumbo, who makes him change the shot, and finally, they whistle play dead. Kobe Bryant in transition. He's going to give it up here, and then Kevin Garnett showing that he can and I asked all these players who their heroes were coming up. Isaiah, your name came up all the time. But Kevin Garnett, he said that his favorite player, he wanted to be like Magic Johnson. It, he's showing it right there, setting up the finish for Kobe well above the rim. Nice. Tim Hardaway in, Penny Hardaway out in the backcourt for the East. There's Tim Hardaway of the Miami Heat on Gary Payton. Hill gets a piece of the pass, and Kemp comes away with it. Kemp pushing it up the floor, takes it in, dumps it off to Hill, and the reverse isn't there, but Jordan stuffs it home. Now they, now they, now they got to push it up. Somebody got to get it in bounds and push it up quick. That's how you get the fans in it. You can't come down and walk it up right now. But the big guys for the West aren't, aren't running back on defense. Shaq banks it in. You know, Shaq has a game when he gets down low. He's strong enough and big enough where he can take a basket. He can gangster a basket. Shaq with seven. Kemp against Malone, who fouled him. When you watch Michael Jordan finish plays that other people couldn't, Grand Hill, unable to get the reverse layup. And Michael, everybody else is standing. And to me, that's the beauty of Michael Jordan. It's about timing. It's about positioning. Everybody else is going to be down on the floor, not knowing where the ball is. And Michael, high above the rim. Everybody else, only a spectator. Jason Williams of the Nets checks in. Jordan, baseline, got it. The thing Michael is happening out here today is nobody's double teaming anybody. So you're allowed to ex display your skills. You're allowed to use all your moves because the coaches wisely have decided not to employ any traps or any double teams. Bryant for three. He didn't come here to be bashful. How much did you listen to your all-star coaches, I said? Well, I listen to him all the time because I was young and afraid like Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Count it, plus the foul for Jordan, who now has eight and a chance for nine. So Michael told him, bring your A game. And if you don't bring your A game, I'm going to embarrass you. Michael, I get him on the low post right here, and they give him the, the fake and the fade and the lean. Through and you get the little bounce and the skip. That's when you know he's in his rhythm. When I was talking to Michael in the locker room before the game today, I asked him about all this speculation about what's going to happen. He said, Bill, I signed up under certain, certain circumstances to play for the Chicago Bulls. And I want to keep playing under those circumstances. If somebody else changes those circumstances, then I don't want to be responsible under changed circumstances. So... It was clear to me that he definitely wants to keep playing in the NBA. David Robinson of the Spurs, Eddie Jones of the Lakers come in for the first time. Vin Baker here for the Sonics, also making his first appearance. And Peyton misses from the corner. Rebound Matumbo. Grant Hill. Jordan. Jordan intercepts it, takes it in against Robinson. There's some contact, but no foul. Eddie Jones to Peyton, Peyton to Bryant, spin move, left hand, no good. Two tried by Jones isn't there, Baker will try it, and finally it's Matumbo. You got the two shot blockers in, and David Robinson in Matumbo, and they both told him they were going to protect the goal. Hill swooping to the hoop, but it comes up short. 
Eddie Jones with a three. Way off. But Peyton keeps it alive for the West. Kobe into the lane, to the hoop, and he's fouled. <laughs> Is this pace quick enough for you? Stopped only temporarily by a timeout. Lots of bench players have been voted All-Stars, but they played as reserves off the bench of the All-Star game. Only three, Havlicek, Marley, and Kobe Bryant, have started the game after being sixth men for their teams during the season. You know, Jerry West and the Lakers thought so much of Kobe Bryant when they drafted him. He told us Friday that they gave him Magic Johnson's own locker. And when he sat in his locker at the forum, he got chills in his body. Who wouldn't? Mr. Clutch? Magic Johnson with his wife Cookie with him. And Kobe has a very good sense of the history of the game. After all, he is the son of Joe Jellybean Bryant, an NBA veteran. He's around the game his entire life. And his mom, Pam, grew up in that whole NBA lifestyle, so she knew how to raise a quality young man here. Yeah, he, he has the total package. He has a great understanding of the game, a great history and a knowledge of the game, very similar to what Michael Jordan and Grant Hill had when they came into the league. Glenn Rice and Reggie Miller are getting set to check in. Rick Smith is already in for the use, the Pacer Center. Here he is, his first shot. He's making his initial All-Star appearance, and this is 10th year in the league. Nobody has ever gone longer in the NBA before making their first All-Star team. A decade in the league, and finally an All-Star. Now, Rick Smith is a very good outside shooter. He, he shoots it good from 18 to 15 fit in. He's got great low post game. And if anybody hasn't seen him play in a while because he's been injured, this guy can put it in, and he's got three-point range. I hope he takes one today. Bob, I think the two most overlooked All-Stars who are finally here are Smith and Nick Van Exel of the Lakers. The last couple of years, Van Exel and Rick Smith have really deserved to be here. It's about time. Van Exel with his first All-Star appearance in half the time of Smith. This is his fifth year. Talking to all the players on the Western Conference, they said the guy they missed most is Charles Barkley because it was really quiet in the locker room before the game. It took Glenn Rice about three seconds to launch his first shot, which is a miss. Now Jason Williams. Hardaway for three, and Tim Hardaway drills it. Knows how to put on a show. He and Gary Payton go back, they go way back from when they were playing against each other in the Western Conference. They got a little rivalry going. That goes back further than that, I said. He was telling me how he used to take a lot of abuse from you <laughs> when he was growing up as a young man in the city of Chicago. Mitch Richmond's first basket, he was the MVP of the game in 95 in Phoenix from the Sacramento Kings, but perhaps not much longer. February 19th, the trading deadline. His name's been in trade talks all year. Hardaway with two in a row from beyond the arc. Robinson's underneath, and he slams it home. Back to Mitch Richmond. Miami's been very interested in trying to get him. Pat Riley's been trying to get him all year. They see him as the missing link to the championship punk with the one-two punch of Hardaway, also having the inside strength of Morning. Pat Riley is desperately seeking a trade to try to bring Mitch Richmond to the Miami Heat. Tim Hardaway evidently feeling that when you're hot, you're entitled to shoot until you cool off. Launch him from about 10 feet beyond the arc and finally miss. That's called a heat check, Bob. And Hardaway, Tim, is one of the guys that can get the MVP today. Mitch Richmond comes off the bench hot. He's hit two in a row. Here's Jason Kidd of the Suns in the game for the first time, leaning on Tim Hardaway. You talk to opposing coaches about Hardaway, Tim, they fear his post game, Bob, every bit as much. And Tim Hardaway, he's your size, Bob. Well, not quite. I wish. Richmond for three. Richmond. You got two guys out there right now, Mitch Richmond and Tim Hardaway. They have a little mini shootout. Both of them are trying to get into a serious thing, a serious group. Last shot time. In the final 10 seconds, Richmond's foot was on the line, by the way. That was a two and not a three. Hardaway into the lane, tosses up a hook. Pat Riley would not have approved, but in the All-Star game, it's okay with Larry Bird. <laughs> Jones missing from half court. First 12 minutes in the books. 
East 33, West 25. Back to Madison Square Garden after this. You're watching the NBA All-Star Game on NBC. You're watching the 1998 NBA All-Star Game on NBC. Welcome back to the All-Star Game. Jim Gray at Madison Square Garden. Kobe Bryant, first quarter, eight points to lead the West in scoring. Kobe, 19 years old. Is this everything you thought it'd be? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely enjoying myself. Uh, it is a top-notch basketball right here, so it's definitely a dream. You're certainly not bashful. You came out firing. <laughs> well, I just wanted to come out and, uh, you know, be aggressive and you know, try to try to get loose and get within the flow of the game. And, you know, Kevin, we talked before the game. He said he's going to help me get loose, and he did. How about that 360 dunk? Tell us about that one. <laughs> I just wanted to improvise and do something, do something nice. Now, you said you'd be nervous. You thought before the game, were you? No, no. Once I stepped out there on the court, I really didn't feel as nervous, I guess, because I was at home, you know, playing a game of basketball. And I haven't played in a couple of days, so I felt at home. Just another game, right? Yeah, right. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kobe, we look forward to seeing you back in the game. Bob? All right, Jim, thanks. Here's Glenn Rice with his first year. Points. And the East is back up by 10 at 35-25 in the first minute of the second quarter. Vin Baker fouled as he goes up. Baker went into the All-Star game on a real high note. 41 points and 11 rebounds on 16 of 22 shooting Wednesday night in a home victory against Larry Bird's Pacers. And folks, you can log on to NBA.com and join NBC's own Steve Cyber Snapper Jones in a live All-Star Cybercast of tonight's game. He's taking your questions. There he is, three-time ABA All-Star. He'll provide his analysis on the NBA's website www.nba.com to speak with the snapper. Baker makes them both. Rice comes back and fires. Long off the back iron. Kid has the rebound. Between his legs, Robinson couldn't handle it, but Baker was there to pick it up and slam it home. Jason Kidd, his last year's All-Star game, after making it the year before, he was injured, broken collarbone. This for him is his dream game. He's the ultimate creator out there in the Western Conference on the break, and now he's got big-time finishers who can deliver. Smith's Slim Hardaway. Ah, to be 7 4 Dream about it, Bob. Dream about it. <laughs> If even you're dreaming about it, I'm not going to bother to think about it. Eddie Jones fades and fires, and Eddie Jones has it rim out for him. Oh, big stick it, and Smith loses it. It'll still belong to the West. Did they take the traveling violation out of this game? Some think they've taken it out of the league entirely, and certainly in the All-Star game, they're not calling it tight. <laughs> Is in the game right now, and obviously the substitutions come fast and furious. Robinson mishandles it. East ball. We got two paces in the game right now. Rick Smith and Reggie Miller. Let's see if they try to run something for one of those guys and get them involved in the play together. Miller driving on kick, tosses it up on the run, and he'll come to the free throw line. This, in a sense, is Reggie Miller's second home. Madison Square Garden. He's had a number of great performances here in front of hostile crowds, crowds he enjoys provoking. Yeah, we, I talked to Reggie Miller Friday, and he was a little, actually he's a little mad because he feels that they're not getting the type of respect that they deserve over here in the East. They feel that everybody's talking about Chicago, and they've kind of conceded that it's going to be Chicago and Miami, and he doesn't want anybody to forget that, hey, we were here a couple of years ago in the Eastern Conference Finals battling Mix. But Reggie gets the ultimate respect when he comes in here because they all boo him the loudest, and he's well aware of the significance of that. Jason Kidd and Jason Williams with the rebound. Second in the league in that category to the Bulls' Dennis Rodman. Tim Hardaway in a crowd has it knocked away, goes to the floor to pick it up, and now it's Glenn Rice. Nice Smith. Glenn Rice's first pass of the afternoon. Richmond's open, but his three spins out. And another rebound for Jason Williams. The lob intended for Rice is broken up by Eddie Jones. Mitch Richmond is back. Miller cuts him off. 
It costs him to miss the layup. See, that's when you know they're playing. They're competing. They're not giving up any layups. Michael Jordan warned them early that they wanted to win, and they're coming out to get it. Hardaway tries another three. It ricochets to Eddie Jones. Rick Spence is making a mistake. He's trying to keep up with the ball. You just got to stay at one end when you're a big guy, preferably the offensive end. A two-pointer for Mitch Richmond. Again, is his toe on the line. The West back to within seven. I'd like to come in on a, a Mitch Richmond situation, Bob. You know, here's a guy who played on basically a losing team his whole career. I think he needs to do more if he's really serious about getting to that championship. He's going to have to take a sacrifice, a pay cut to get what he wants. He cannot have both. One of the great catch-and-shoot players in NBA history, Reggie Miller, doing just that. What he does best in that last sequence. Here's Vin Baker muscling one home. You got to admire what Vin Baker has done to his body. He was a guy, when he first came into the league, was a very skinny kid. He spent a lot of time working out in the summer, and has got his body to the point where he can go down and perform under the low post. Kid locked it up there for Eddie Jones. Nice. Now see, that, that's Jason Kidd and Eddie Johnson. And Eddie, Eddie Jones. And the Hollywood finish. Jason Kidd told me before the game, Bob, what he learned from Magic Johnson, his boyhood hero, was when you come to these games, learn to let the joy show. And the West Bench just absolutely loves it. Everybody coming up and enjoying it. I'm Mark Rashad back at Madison Square Garden and Michael C. Now, you weren't feeling well when the game started, but once you got out there, you and Kobe going one-on-one, -on -one, it got exciting. Well, I mean, he's coming at me. I mean, I think that's that's the approach. I think he's being very, very aggressive. And, uh, you know, if, it, if I knew someone was sick, certainly the first thing I'd do, I'd go out to someone. But, you know, I got to defend myself, you know. I'm going right. to go out He's got to play defense. It's like I got to play defense. I noticed that you, you, you woke up, though. You know, you kind of like... Gliding a little bit, and then once Kobe started going at you, you came back. I'm just trying to, you know, get my legs underneath me. I haven't been near basketball for three or four days, and I haven't been up out of bed for that long. So, I mean, uh, I'm not trying to overdo things. And uh, No, but he's doing the right thing. He's coming at me, which he's supposed to. But I, I, I have to defend myself in whatever way I can. So the pride factor does count. Oh, yeah, it counts a lot. <laughs> the king is not dead, Bob. <laughs> long live the king. And while Ahmad was chatting with Michael... Reggie Miller hit a two and Glenn Rice a three for the East. Here's Baker with authority for the West. It's 45-37 East. See, that's what the young kids have to do. They have to come out and challenge the veterans and make them play, make them compete. And if they don't compete, you got to embarrass them if you want the younger players. Well, let's see what Jones decides to do to the reverse slam. The thing that I like what's happening here is that the younger guys are making the older guys play. They're competing. They brought their A game. Everybody's stepping up to the challenge, and everybody wants to perform here. Here's Steve Smith of the Hawks. He and Antoine Walker of the Celtics just checked in. Rice for three again and good again. So you got good spacing. You got good ball movement. You know, in the rookie game last night, they wanted to do a lot of isolation, a lot of one-on-ones. What you see happening here is that they're playing basketball together. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of picks. There's a lot of screens. Mitch Richmond, it's short. Robinson keeps it alive and a fresh 24 for the West. Here's Richmond. And Smith's with the rebound, as if anyone's ever going to use the whole 24 in this game. Jason Kidd is passing. They're not catching. And they're not finishing. Rice has hit three consecutive three-pointers. Glenn Rice has got hot. He's hot now. Now they got to keep feeding him. they got to keep feeding him the basketball. One of the game's deadliest marksmen when he's on. He has 11 points in this quarter. Holds the all-star record with 20 points in a quarter last year. Smith's John Robinson. We'll come back to Madison Square Garden after this. You know, Magic was dealing with a serious illness at that time. Before the game, we had a players-only meeting, and we all decided that we wanted to go up and hug him and embrace him and show the world that it was okay to let Magic back on the world stage again. And it was a very, very special moment for all of us as players because Magic had done so much and meant so much to all of us. 
He hit that last three pointer over you, but you didn't seem to mind. <laughs> well, you, you have to put the show on, Bob. I was mad. Really, I was upset that he, that he shot it in my face like that. But basketball, and you would recognize it. Basketball fans will never forget that the, this All Star game is what it is today because of Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas, the two guys who, who created the show and, 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 and learned how to get everybody involved and put on the spectacle that it is today. Robinson's cross-court pass deflected out of bounds by Reggie Miller. Five and a half to play in the first half, the East by 10. Well, I love what I'm seeing in this All-Star game here. Unlike the others in the past couple of years, the guys are competing, they're working hard, and they're putting on the show. I think it's a combination of Larry Bird's presence, Jordan's presence, Magic, you're sitting here, New York City, it has all been perfect. Another assist there for Jason Kidd, setting Robinson up for the dunk, and then Kidd fouls Rice. That's his second. Speaking about Glenn Rice, I was asking him, you know, what has changed over the years, what he's learned now in these multiple All-Star appearances, including last year's MVP performance. He said the thing that surprised him the most, Bob, was that Michael Jordan keeps getting taller and better and better. While everybody expects him to slow down, but because Jordan works so hard at it, He's that good. Antoine Walker got the bounce. Now at the other end, Duncan with the turnaround, and he connects. He's the only rookie in the game, although not the youngest player on the floor, of course, because Kobe Bryant, straight out of high school, is just 19, and this is second season. Rice finally misses a three, and Duncan has the rebound. Van Exel into a crowd, lost it, recovers it, shoots it, misses it. <laughs> Here comes Antoine Walker behind the back to Reggie Miller. Man, nice play. Antoine's another one of those guys who are from Chicago in the summer league. Play with Mark Aguirre, play with all the guys in, in Chicago. And you'll see what happens here. Antoine comes up. He reads it, sees Reggie Miller out the corner of his eye, behind the back back pass. That's the peripheral vision. Even though, Isaiah, that he's from Chicago, he did say that Magic was his guy. He said, well, he said, he said Magic was bigger, like I was bigger, but I, Antoine Walker, the oldest of six children, grew up in, in, in the humble circumstances there. He's bought his mother and his younger family members a nice house out in the suburbs. He puts on free clinics in, in, uh, in the Chicago area in the summertime, and Michael Jordan, surprisingly enough, Larry Bird didn't forget about him over there. He comes back in along with Sean Kemp and Grant Hill. Smiths, Miller, and Rice go out. So you see Antoine Walker bringing the ball up court. He's very versatile. He can play inside, outside. He can do it all out on the court. Walker misses the three. And the three is not out of his range. Look how Jason Kidd positions himself on the rebound. He is on the move as his big guys, Duncan Robinson, are moving to get that ball so he gets the quick outlet first and starts to break. Beautiful. But the All-Star game was made for a guy like Jason Kidd with his talent and his passing ability. He's very unselfish and he wants to give it up to everybody. Robinson took it away from Kemp. Here comes the West. And Exel with it. Pulls up, unleashes a three. It's no good. Kemp back the other way. Even the big men can play like guards, or at least try to in this game. They all want to show they've got a handle. Jordan left alone. That's usually not a real good idea. <laughs> well, Michael Jordan has the real handle. Uh, David Robinson just looked at him and said, do you ever miss jumpers? Tim Duncan. Backing walk around. And scoops one up. It's an air ball. His teammate David Robinson tries to follow. And now he's coming to the line. It was a terrific pass, Bob. He saw the defense coming across. He just threw it over to the top uh, of the backboard. Yeah. Remember, Robinson, uh, Duncan grew up in the Virgin Islands dreaming about being a guard. Next Sunday, as the promo interrupts the fascinating discussion, the NBA on NBC returns with a doubleheader starting at 2.30 Eastern on Showtime. Then in Game 1, Barkley and the Rockets, Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers. Then the Pistons and the Bulls from Chicago in Game 2. The NBA on NBC, a doubleheader, unusual start time, 2.30 Eastern for the pregame show, 3 o'clock Game 1. Is going with lots of guards. Future of basketball is unbelievable. Little guys in the perimeter with just one or two big guys in the middle. 
After the two free throws, David Robinson has 10. Steve Smith connects on a three. Three points for Steve Smith. Van Exel trying to find Kobe. Too long off the glass. Jordan back on the wing to Smith. Off the baseline. Steve, now, now Steve Smith was another one of those guys who grew up in Detroit, came to my camp. Came to my camp when he was in high school, out of Persian high school. Jordan swimming ahead, saving it, intending it for Smith, but now Gary Payton has it. Van Exel into the lane. <laughs> Nick Van Exel. Van Exel. Bob, Nick Van Exel grew up an only child in Kenosha, Wisconsin, halfway between Milwaukee and Chicago. He said his dreams as a kid were just to go to Division I and be on TV every now and then. Now here he is at the ultimate game. Kobe Bryant couldn't stop Michael Jordan. Robinson came over to try to help on a double team, but Michael hit the hoop anyway. You know, the players want to see Michael and Kobe go at it. Every time one of them gets the ball, they kind of let them isolate and go one-on-one. -on -one. Bryant tries to answer at the other end. It's no good. Duncan misses the little hook, and Kobe has it back. Antoine Walker with the steal. Sometimes in this game, it's hard to recognize right off who your teammates are. Here's Smith for three, and Steve Smith is on fire. He and Howard Isley were in the same camp of mine. Rashawn Leonard, all those guys. Van Exel floating through the air, and Jordan has the rebound. 67-51 East. With all those campers li listening to those lectures you gave. Well, not only the lectures that I was given, but Magic Johnson was there, Mark McGuire was there, George Gervin was there. We used to have some great games out the camp. Jordan gives it up to Kemp inside. Robinson deflects the shot, and his teammate Duncan has it. Last minute of the half. Now Duncan can't finish it, but Peyton can. Now, that's the creativity of the young guys. Kobe Bryant just made a, a dribble move on the run that I've never seen before. He took it behind his back to reverse way and then dished it off to Tim Duncan. Jordan. Stuck at 13 as that one spins out. The West guards are rebounding the long ball better than the East. Van Exel. His three. Cuts the East lead to 67-56. But that's the first three-pointer for the West today in eight attempts. Senior season halftime for a very special New York Broadway presentation. Antoine Walker backs up, cranks up a three. Bryant with the rebound. <laughs> the clock is stuck at 27 seconds. Talk about home court advantage. The ball goes out of bounds. <laughs> And while they try and figure out how much time remains before halftime, we sneak in a commercial. Lurking in the shadows in the Showtime perch, Hannah Storm, Peter Bessie, and John Sally. They'll join us with the Prudential Halftime Report. And you won't want to miss it as some of the stars of Broadway perform show tunes live from center court. There's a Broadway theme, as you may know, to this whole All-Star Weekend. Bill Walton hanging around the hotel lobby impersonating Ethel Merman for hours on end, which, which I found actually very disturbing. What team does she play for, Bob, in the WNBA? There's no business like NBA business. In the last three seconds, Peyton with the left hand and Bryant, something to take into the locker room. Bryant! Seven, 58 after the first 24 minutes. Jordan leads all scores with 13. Rice has 11. David Robinson and Kobe Bryant each with 10 to lead the West. The Prudential Halftime Report comes up next. I'm Bob Shot back in Madison Square Garden. I'm joined by Michael Jordan. Now, everybody is excited about this showdown between you and Kobe. Now, how do you see it the first half? Well, uh, first of all, I don't consider it a showdown, but I think that, you know, we, we both are trying to do our job to entertain and we try to play as hard and not try to isolate ourselves away from the rest of the players. So, I mean, in the mix of that, we will have our, our times where we go one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm not going to try to do it too often because I, I don't want to take away from the other guys being here. But you will not shy away from that isolation. Well, I will defend myself without a doubt. <laughs> all right, let's go down to Jim who's with Kobe. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. We'll get the response. You're not shying away at all from Michael. You're going after him, aren't you, Kobe? 
I'm just having fun. I'm having a good time. Uh, you know, Michael's a great player, one of the best players of all time. And, you know, what better way to learn the game than going at him? But you've issued a bit of a challenge, and, and, and he's got his pride up, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, me too. And that's how you play the game. Uh, you know, that's how I grew up playing the game, and I'm sure he did too, and every player out here as well. So you know, that's what makes this game interesting. Now, there have been a couple of smiles exchanged between you two. Have there been any words? No, no, not yet. All right, Kobe. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, Bob, he's coming after him. As most of you know, Michael Jordan bypassed the All-Star practice yesterday, had flu symptoms, temperature of 101, took antibiotics, rested, declared before the game that he felt much better. And in this game, he's already bypassed Elgin Baylor, Julia Serving, and Bob Pettit with his 13 first-half points, and now trails only Kareem and the Big O in the all-time annals of All-Star scoring. He had a couple of steals in the first half, and now, Isaiah, you must give it up. But look at that list. That was the only record that I had that he hadn't got yet. Now he's taking everything. <laughs> he took the championship trophy from me. He took the all-star trophy from me. Now he's taking the all-star steals. <laughs> he has ransacked the entire village. <laughs> if the lift is Magic, Jordan, Isaiah, and Jordan, that special company. We start the second half. Shaq with the pass from Peyton. Can't bring it home. And Sean Kemp has it for the East. They lead by nine. Penny Hardaway. Tim Hardaway of the Heat felt that he deserved the All-Star start. Michael missing, and so he's still at 13. Insofar as Penny played only 17 games in the season's first half, but the fans voted for Penny. Here's Peyton. But Bob, there's some historical context to that comment because in 92 when Magic won the MVP, we had the flashback earlier. Tim Hardaway gave up his starting spot to let Magic start. Magic wasn't him played that year. Tim Hardaway went to Penny and said, hey, look, that's the way I feel, and I'm not changing my mind. Grant Hill hit for the East. Kevin Garnett answers for the West. Garnett is the first All-Star starter from Minneapolis since... George Michael in the 50s. Jordan with a smile on his face, toying with Carl Malone. Kemp. Malone has the rebound. Peyton accelerates, dishing to Garnett over Kemp. He's hit two in a row. You know, when, I, when Garnett was in high school, when I was scouting him, he played every position out on the floor. But his favorite position, believe it or not, was the point guard position. He fancied himself as being a big Magic Johnson. And that might work against him. Because he's been catapulted into this level. And, 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 and the game for Kevin Garnett is not quite there yet because of that huge contract he signed. And now he's got to live up. And believe me, his life will never be the same. And why not with 126 million? Shaq missing the fadeaway, and Kemp has the rebound. Matumbo had the last basket off a Penny Hardaway pass for the East. John Kemp has quietly put together a nice game here this afternoon. Hard to do anything quietly, though, in this game. <laughs> Understatement is not the coin of the watch round tonight. Watch low, watch low. Here's who's on the watch floor low. right now. You got the one on one. You see everybody clears up. I'm not so sure what that was, but Kemp has it. Now Malone takes it away. Who wants it? Well, Shaq was protecting his buddy. That was a far end. Kobe giving it to Kobe. Thought about it for a second, but decided, hey, I'd like to try the windmill jam. That was nice. That was nice. Peyton has 10 assists now. Remember, Peyton had 15 assists in the game that Mitch Richmond won the MVP back in Phoenix. Shaq really closed it down the middle. Matumbo. You know, when we talk about Penny Hardaway starting, or Kevin Garnett, who might not be the best player right now on his own team with Stephon Marbury and Tom Gugliotta. Someday he'll be the most valuable property there, no matter how good Marbury and Gugliotta may be. But it's a matter of who the fans wanted to see, like this guy, Kobe Bryant. The starters, at least, are the province of the fans. The reserves voted on by a consensus of each conference's coaches. Kobe, Jerry Reynolds, who used to coach Sacramento, now their director of player personnel, said, look, we accept 
It's a popularity contest. If you put Little Penny on the ballot, he'd start. <laughs> that last play, though, by Kobe Bryant uh, is an example of what he really needs to do to get to the next level. Being able to score off his own triple when everything is too far extended. The only player who really does that, though, right now is Michael Jordan. Big Penny misses. West back with the ball. Nice tip away by... Which Penny is that? That would be Big Penny. Okay. And to Kid, Garnett misses. Here's the finals matchup right now. He looks like it. The Jazz swept their two games during this regular season against the Bulls. Beat them in Chicago and in Salt Lake City. Hill floats. Doesn't hit it, but the tip is there for Sean Kim. Bryant ahead to Shaq. Matumbo all over him. And wrestles him down. <laughs> Matumbo told us Friday he wasn't giving up anything. He said, no free lunch, no free chili. If Shaq gets it underneath, I'm fouling him. I'm not giving anything. Shaq out in transition, the absolute best player in today's game, a big man up and down the floor. Now, Shaq told me that he, he asked for 100 tickets. He only got 20. How disappointing. Well, Shaq, with a somewhat checkered all-star history, he's been selected all six years he's been in the league. Last year, he was injured, didn't come to Cleveland, took some criticism for not showing up to be honored among the 50 greatest of all time. In 94, playing for the East, George Carl, this year's West coach, George coaching the West for the third time, doubled and sometimes triple teamed and held him to eight points, and Shaq was really steamed. Here's Michael from 20. He's missed three in a row in this second half. And in 96, Shaq had 25 points and 10 rebounds in San Antonio. Jordan steals it, sets Penny up. He juggled it a little, so we couldn't go into the full-fledged act there, so he just kind of lays it in. And Shaq in 96, playing in San Antonio, where he went to high school, felt that maybe he should have been the MVP, and they gave it to Michael Jordan instead. So he's had some all-star disappointments, even though generally he's played well in the game. Malone with the basket at the other end. Won that All-Star game last year in Cleveland. Shaq had a great game. But Michael Jordan did something that hasn't been done in an All-Star game ever. He recorded a triple-double. So Jordan deserved the MVP, which he also did last year. Now that move that Shaq just, just performed... It's something that he's been working on, and as Shaq gets older, his game continues to develop and grow in the low post. He's starting to find his way and starting to find his space in the low post, and he repays Matumbo back for the slam. Doesn't he name each of his moves? And I believe that this particular move, the spin move off the baseline, he has dubbed the Black Tornado. It blew Matumbo away, I'll tell you that. 8069 East. Back to the NBA All-Star Game on NBC after this. Dikembe Mutombo at the line, as you may know, grew up in Zaire, which is now, after much turmoil, once again the Congo. But when it was Zaire, he, as an eight-year-old kid in 1974, stood in the back of the stadium, stood on top of a crate to see over the crowd to watch Muhammad Ali fight George Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle. 1974. His mom ran a concession stand at the stadium selling soda and snuck him in as an eight-year-old to see the fight. Brian missing. And Dikembe still goes regularly back to Africa, his, his native country, and he's planning on building a couple of hospitals there. Raises a ton of money. He's bringing the entire NBA over there for a big all-star game next September in South Africa, Bob. Maybe not the entire NBA. Well, enough to play a game. A few hundred would swell the population. <laughs> Malone. And Carl Malone hits. He's been oh, this week is saying, you know, I'm really not a Showtime player. All-star games aren't for me, but he has twice been the MVP in 89 and in 93. Hill off the Hardaway pass, and then Jordan intercepts the inbound. But this is Carl Malone's first All-Star game without John Stockton, and he told us Friday that he feels kind of lost. He doesn't know what to do without his partner out there, but if he gets hot, he says he wants a lot of time, and he wants the ball. MJ Slithers inside Bryant, and a goaltending call on Shaquille O'Neal, but he really took the youngster to school on that exchange. Isolated along the baseline, to back him down, you look inside, the middle of hits, the step underneath, Kobe hung out to drive Shaq 
Only the gold tent, possibly. But see, that's what teammates do, Bill. You're not going to embarrass my teammate. That's what Shaq said. <laughs> Kobe for three. That's where Kobe is much better than creating off his own dribble. The spot up shooting, one quick dribble here and then up. See, when Sean keeps dunk, I love the, the antics that he does after his dunks. You know, the, the little moves that he does. Garnett, that's a two point attempt. Kemp has the rebound. Hardaway set Kemp up for that dunk with a nice pass. This time it's Hardaway to Matumbo. Way to reward the big fella. The big fella gets out and run. You got to give him the basketball. Bryant now has 13 after hitting the three a moment ago. Shaq to the foul line for the jumper. The East has so many of these six, seven guys like Grant Hill. Who can dribble and out after the home rebound. Bryant puts it seen that move before but the official said hey it's a show we're watching it like everybody else that's the same dribble move that he used in the first half it's a move that i haven't seen in basketball before his creativity is amazing <laughs> peyton with an easy one well he wanted to pass it off the board to shack but to kemp he saw the whole thing coming and stayed at home with shack Hardaway. <laughs> None of the shot blockers are coming, Bob. They're all standing with their own guys so they don't get dunked on. Defense taking a holiday, especially in the last few minutes. Uncontested layup. Bryant with a three. Displaying the full range. He has the incredible hook sandwiched in between a pair of threes. And now Hill with the slam. Kobe's putting on the show. He's got magic jumping out of his seat. He got everybody in here going crazy. He's got 18. Malone is short with it. Jordan, who has 15, comes back into the lane, off balance, and gets the roll. That's what you loved about, about Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Now, Matumbo, Matumbo may have touched that ball on the rim. It was going in anyway. The referees have pocketed the whistle, Bob. Well, when you're Michael Jordan in this league, you got to get some breaks. you got to get some calls, particularly in the All-Star game. They give the basket to Matumbo, though, not to Michael. And O'Neal hits the little hook. Back comes Hardaway. The scoreboard doing crazy things at Madison Square Garden. I just looked up to check the score out. And it reads East 97, West 3. Kobe wants to take the choice. He's saying, I don't want you to pass it. Look at the dribble move. Look at the face. And the hook. Let's take another look at that. I've never seen this before. Behind his back, to himself, to his right hand, and the Kareem Sky hook. <laughs> You're not that old that you've never seen that move. Magic jump. Look at Magic. <laughs> hey, I don't think Magic's ever seen it before, but he loves it. And now Kobe from the outside. And this is a deep, long three right in front of, I love this game. And he laughs and gives hey, us a wink. The highlight reel is what it's about, but just for... Uh, just for the books, it's 97-83. <laughs> Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. I'm Jim Gray. A spectacular show by a 19-year-old young man, Kobe Bryant, is mesmerizing this entire crowd and the entire NBA, all of his peers. Look at this move. He's shooting 7 for 16 from the field. Kobe, Isaiah Thomas, and Bill Walton have seen an awful lot of basketball. They said they've never seen a player move like that. Where'd you learn that one? I was uh, really just playing on the playgrounds in Philadelphia when I came back from Europe. I picked up a few tricks here and there. Now, how much did you practice that for this game specifically? Not much. When I get in this game, I just basically try to play off of instincts. Now, come on. You had to practice that a little bit. You told me you had a little something special. Was that it? No, not yet. Not yet. You got something else in there, huh? If I get the opportunity to, I will, yeah. 18 points. You think an MVP at all if you can come back? <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. I'm just out there playing. <laughs> all right, Kobe. We look forward to the next trick, Bob. Gary Payton hit a three while they were talking. Well, if that's not the A-list move, I'd love to see what it is. That's not the secret play, he says. 
And Kobe Bryant from Philadelphia, the All-Star game is there next year, and he has said that his goal was to make the All-Star team in his third year so he could play in Philly. He jumped it by a year, and it's obvious that he belongs. Well, it's amazing that the things that the young guys coming into the league are thinking about in their minds. I never would imagine that a player would ever try a move like that. So Kobe talked about being over in Europe and learning that move when he came back. It's interesting that Kobe speaks three languages. He speaks fluent Italian and French. And he also scored 1,100 on his SAT and is still continuing his college education while he's a professional basketball player. Amazing young man. Studying at UCLA, I might add. I say, you want everybody to be at UCLA. That's right. I wanted you to come there. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody better at 19 than Kobe Bryant? I've never seen anyone with the skill set and the maturity that he has at 19 and the total understanding for the entertainment package. Magic, myself, Michael Jordan, all of us, when we came into the league, we understood how to win championships, how to play basketball. But Kobe, at a very young age, understands the entertainment of basketball and understands how to get on the stage and entertain and perform. The two best that I ever saw at 19 were Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when he was a youngster at UCLA and then Sabonis, now the center for the Portland Trailblazers. When he was a 19-year-old player before the injuries and before he put on the weight, he was a 7'3 Larry Bird who could do everything. But did he understand how to bring the fans into the game and how to make them say, ooh, and ah? He didn't have to. Here's Van Exel. It's in and out, and Jason Williams has the rebound. When you saw the high scores a moment ago, Jordan at 17. They changed that basket back again. Remember, Jordan took the jumper. Matumbo might have been guilty of an offensive goaltend, but he shoved it back home. But at first, they gave the basket to Dikembe, and now they've changed it to Jordan. So give Michael 17. Here's Eddie Jones driving. Vin Baker comes away with it. The ball out of bounds to the West. Just so nice to see David Robinson back in this game, Bob. I mean, it was a year ago with the back injury and the foot surgery where they put the pin in there. He didn't believe himself that he was going to make it back. Mitch Richmond short with the two-point attempt. Williams has not scored in this game, but he has a bunch of rebounds. He's got six of them in limited duty. Here's Tim Hardaway tossing one up no good, but Glenn Rice is there for the follow. You know, when we talked to David Robinson Friday, he told us when we were standing on the stage, Bill, at the, with the 50 greatest players, it killed him not to be in that All-Star game in Cleveland, and he is so pleased with himself that he's been able to come back from the type of surgery that he's had and made the All-Star team in the Again. And Exel marauding through the lane and tossing it home. While we're on the 50 greatest players, it was amazing that Isaiah Thomas was the only guy there who none of his teammates were on that 50 greatest roster. That's how good this young man was. And Exel racing back the other way. I, I didn't realize that, Bill, that I didn't have a teammate there in, until I went to talk to you <laughs> and you were standing there with five Celtics. <laughs> But then it then it dawned on me, you know, that's why we couldn't beat you. <laughs> good players on those teams. Uh, David Robinson has been playing with a bad shoulder for a while. And he comes out rubbing it there. You got the penetration in the lane and he cups it and finger rolls it. You know, as he drove through the lane to protect the basketball, he cupped it so he can bring it out and finger roll it, a la George Gervin. The East has led all the way. They're up now by 11 with 17 seconds to play in the third quarter. Robinson cuts it to 10. Nick Van Exel was especially appreciative of the encouraging words all season long by his good friend but opponent, Gary Peake, who has constantly said, Nick, you'll get there one day. Just be Rice was hammered, no foul call. Rice slings it the other way as the buzzer sounds. Well, they were at the top of the marquee coming in, and they're doing it through three. The East by ten. This, as you no doubt are aware, is the NBA on NBC. And we're back after these messages and a word from your local station. 
Welcome back to the All-Star Game. I'm Jim Gray, the creator, the innovator of Showtime right here, Magic Johnson. Have you ever seen a young man like Kobe Bryant so confident at his age and so mature? No, no, never. I think that uh, he show you things that uh, a lot of, uh, what are you talking about, 19 year old, a lot of guys 25 and 30, 35 can't even do. And that move down there was just unbelievable, his creativity and the fact that he thought and believed that it would go in was just amazing. And, and Isaiah, he understands that because he got moves like that himself. <laughs> now, you talk a lot with Kobe, yeah. obviously, since you're with the club quite a bit. Yeah. He got your locker. How thrilled was he to have a 32's old locker? Well, he, he said I was always his idol, so it made me feel good. But I think the main thing is we're bringing him along as slowly as well, possible. Well, you've been trying to until yeah. tonight. Well, what is this going to do? Kind of ruin that process, uh, didn't it? I know, but we still want to do that. I just hope Michael Jordan stays around one more year to really, again, show him what a professional is like. To show, them, show him that he still must improve on his basketball game. And then if he can do that, uh, then I think Kobe will be all right. But he needs Michael to stay around to really still show him, to still be the teacher, and he's, he can still be the pupil and learn from Michael Jordan. Now, have you conveyed those thoughts and that sentiment to Michael Jordan that you would like to see him stay? And are you trying to talk him out of leaving? Yeah, I told him that yesterday as well as today. And I also talked to Kobe about looking at him and really not trying to pattern his game after him, but look at him and what he has accomplished. But not only what he has accomplished, but how he has accomplished it. He's always added something to his game. He's always in the gym practicing. This is Michael Jordan I'm talking about. So now, uh, Kobe, you have to do the same thing. Was Michael receptive to what you said? And, and you think he has an open mind about returning? Well, I, I think he has an open mind. I think right now he, he'll probably wait to the end of the season to really find out, okay, what the Bulls is going to do, who's going to be there. I, without Bill Jackson, he's never going to go back to the Bulls. That's all. But if, but if Phil remains, then I think there's a great possibility. But, hey, this is the Mecca right here in New York. Hey, it might be a possibility here or L.A. He has to have a center stage. He can't be with just any team. He has to have a, a stage. And it, what bigger stage than New York or somewhere? Magic, great to see you. Always a thrill. Tell my boy Isaiah, hello, Bob, hello. Isaiah, nobody yeah. could do it like us, though. See, we had this game moving up and down, baby, up and down. <laughs> All right, Magic. Man, I, I, feel feel you. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you guys going to go kiss again? or? Well, that, that's my brother, and I love him. <laughs> <laughs> and while we consider the possibility, let's step aside for a commercial. <laughs> it seems like the best plan. <laughs> Well, moments ago, while we were away, Magic Johnson answers the question. <laughs> it is now an official game. <laughs> I was interested in, in, in Magic's comments, uh, ho hoping and urging Michael Jordan to come back. I, I think he should come back. I hope he does come back. And I was talking to Bill Russell, who was my favorite player when I was growing up. And I asked him about the situation that you know, he was in at the end of his career and the, who was going to be the coach. Mm -hmm. And Russell said that every great player at that level, Russell, Bird, Magic, Isaiah Thomas, they should be able to pick their own coach. Well, I was in a very similar situation in Detroit when Chuck Daly left. And we had a coaching change, and I had to adjust to a Ron Rothstein and a Don Chaney, two new coaches, and it totally threw my rhythm off. And even in my last year, I remember Don Chaney benched me and played Lindsey Hunter for me. <laughs> so what? He was what, gone quick. <laughs> well, he was going the next year after that. But what Jordan is going through and what he's talking about with Phil Jackson is that you don't want to break in a new coach. You don't want have you don't want to have someone who comes in and doesn't understand the way you play the game. Well, we're already in an era, long since into an era, where that's part of the game. Magic Johnson ushered Paul Westhead out and Pat Riley in in the early 80s. Grant Hill didn't support Doug Collins. I don't know if he pushed him out, but he certainly didn't pull him back in. And now Doug Collins is not the piston coach. Penny Hardaway wanted Brian Hill out, so did some other members of the Orlando Magic, and out went Brian Hill. So Michael Jordan saw to it that Phil Jackson remained beyond when, for whatever reason, Chicago management wanted him to remain. And now Michael says, if Phil doesn't come back, I don't come back. 
But that's what makes the Chicago situation so bizarre. Because they all want him back, and the people in Chicago love him. And Drayton nails a three for emphasis as we discuss this again. Yeah, and the guys that you talked about, though, though, they're not at the level that Michael Jordan is, or Magic Johnson was, or even myself. Those guys that you're talking about, they haven't won championships. And so you say to yourself, regardless of what friction there may be, as we watch Michael hit the triple again, between Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause and Phil Jackson, regardless of how enamored Jerry Krause may be of Tim Floyd of Iowa State, if you got a team that can win another championship or contend for one, and if Michael Jordan says, this is what I want, and it's worked to the tune of five titles and maybe seven, had Michael not gone away to play baseball, what's the problem in bringing them all back? You're asking the wrong guy, Bob. It's a rhetorical question, I guess. I believe I'm preaching to the choir with you two. <laughs> Reggie Miller hit at the other end. Now Van Exel with a three that's well. And Jason Williams, the closest thing to a hometown star. Grew up in the Lower East Side of New York. College at St. John's. Now representing the New Jersey Nets with Patrick Ewing hurt. There's no Nick in the game. Miller for three, as he's done so often in this building, and he turns to face Spike Lee. But this might be the one night when Spike is actually rooting for Reggie, since he's got to be as a Knicks fan, pulling for the Eastern Conference. Bob, Spike never roots for Reggie. Every time he sees Reggie in the Indiana uniform, he roots totally against him. Reggie almost quit the game of basketball before this season. He's had all kinds of problems, the injuries of a couple years ago. Somebody comes in and foolishly, stupidly burns his house down, destroys his whole lifetime of collection of stuff. Larry Bird, when he took the coaching job, he called up Reggie and said, Hey, Reggie, look, I know you're going through a lot of trouble here. We need you. We got something that's really special here. Please, please stay with us. We think we can turn it back around. Reggie reluctantly came back to play, and it's really paid off. And when you talk about Reggie's house burning down, to show you what type of league this is, how the players and the commissioner looks out for the family members, David Stern has taken it upon himself to start a memorabilia collection for Reggie Miller to get back all the stuff that he Van Exel tried to set his teammate Eddie Jones up when Eddie couldn't finish. Van Exel was there, but there may have been a foul before Van Exel attempted his shot, and there was, so Eddie Jones is coming to the line. Well, this is like a regular Laker game right here, just coming down in waves, throwing the ball up above the hoop and throwing it down. Well, there's a great all-star tradition of helping to get your teammates off in this game. Carl Malone, the two times he won MVP, had 28 points in each game. Stockton had 17 assists the first time and 15 the second time when he shared MVP honors at the Delta Center with Carl Malone. I, I remember that game uh, that those two won the, the MVP there, but the thing I remember most about that game is that was Shaquille's first All-Star game. And I remember him coming to my room asking me for advice. And Joe and not Joe Dumars and I were sitting on the bed and this seven-foot guy comes in and he was the first one to turn Joe and I on to rap music. He was rapping, singing a song about Snoop Doggy Dog. And that's when Joe and I looked at each other and said, you know, I think we're getting a little too old for this stuff now. <laughs> Jordan spins into the lane. The up and under is there for him. <laughs> You obviously told Shaq to inbound the ball, block a lot of shots, and rebound and throw long outlets. When the guy's that big, you don't say anything to him, but okay. Van Exel threw a crowd with a miss. Jones out of the pack of the ball, puts it back up and no good. Jim Baker has it blocked, and here's Michael. Jordan has 22 points, bouncing to Miller, and Reggie can't finish it. Van Exel slings it back the other way. Jones pulls up for three. Ben oh, oh, oh. Baker blocked by Smiths. Now the hands of Michael. Ben Baker pushed Reggie Miller out of the way, and Rick Smiths came behind him and said, don't push my team. Smiths at seven short goes behind the back to give Jason Williams the bucket. The Duncan Dutchman under behind the back pass. Well, he went to school at Marist College just a few miles north of Madison Square Garden. He's got to have some rooters here today. His no. family is here from Holland, Bobby. Yeah, that's where he's from. Known for his dunk, the Duncan Dutchman behind the back to Jason for a slam dunk. Dutch treat. <laughs> And the bench goes crazy. And how about the up, the scoop, the George Gervin finger roll.
back to Madison Square Garden as soon as we can catch our breath. Moments ago, the Phoenix Suns gorilla, assaying the role of King Kong, absent Fay Ray, uses the collapsing Empire State Building to launch himself toward a slam. And here are masters of their respective domains, Commissioner David Stern and Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. The mayor overlooking the apparent zoning ordinance violation involved in the <laughs> collapsing Empire State Building. A while ago, the East went on a 12-0 run to up their advantage to 119-96, to but the score doesn't eliminate Kobe Bryant as an MVP candidate, that's for sure, and there's some history. There have been three MVPs off losing teams. Bob Pettit of the Hawks in 1958, Dr. J in 1977, Magic Johnson in 1990, Rick Smith from the head of the key. Smith is feeling it now. You can just see it in his face. Finally, his health returned to him this year. The feet looking, feeling very good. Well, the East players has taken a cue from Michael Jordan early in the game. He told him when he first got here this week, he wants to win this game, and the East has come out to show their dominance. And we talked to Bird. He talked about playing Jordan at the point. Michael misses with the left hand, but Antoine Walker of the Celtics slams it home and uh, makes sure folks notice it. Eddie Jones with the reverse. Very nice. Well, we're talking to Eddie Jones. He talked about how he's changed his dedication this year. Last year, he tailed off at the end of the season and, 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 and did not play well in the playoffs. And it, it was because he stopped working out off the court. He said to work out throughout the season in that weight room with his physical trainer. And uh, he's convinced that those moments of inconsistency that have played Eddie Jones are now a thing of the past. Yeah, I, I know from experience from being in GM in Toronto that when you put the fear in a player's heart that you may send him from Los Angeles <laughs> to Sacramento, <laughs> that'll make you play a little better and work a lot harder. Antoine Walker for three. He has that kind of range, but he misses. He had a 49-point game earlier this year against Washington. That matches Michael Jordan's 49 against the Clippers for the high output in the league this year. In and out for Eddie Jones. And here comes Reggie Miller, who scored 14. The East by 25. 125 to 100. Coming up on four minutes to play in the game. Walker. And Duncan the rebound. Do you think Larry Bird is trying to play Michael Jordan a lot of minutes to suck up to him? <laughs> no, because I think he's trying to wear him out, possibly. Smith with the very nice block there. And there is Larry Bird, a 12-time All-Star, three-time league MVP, and the All-Star coach in his rookie year. Under Siege 2, Dark Territory, starring Steven Seagal, comes up after the All-Star game. Bob, when I was talking to Michael and Larry before the game tonight, they were reminiscing about the great moments in Barcelona. And I know, Zeke, how, how, how disappointed you were not to be on that trip. But we do have Ahmad Rashad, who knows a little bit about that trip to Barcelona. I do know about the trip to Barcelona, but another thing was I was talking to about Michael retiring. He said he doesn't he doesn't want Michael to retire. He said he knows that when you retire, you have absolutely nothing to do. There are not enough tea times to keep you busy. And he said, take it from me. I'm back coaching, and he said, I hope Michael does not make that same mistake because he's a guy that needs something to do every day, like play basketball. Bob? I was retired once, and I hated it. And I I lost track of how many times you were retired. <laughs> Here is Garnett. We've heard tonight that Michael has the two most esteemed predecessors of his telling him to retire. Garnett with the dunk. Magic is working on him. Larry Bird's working on him. Millions of fans would say the same to him if they had an opportunity. Well, we just don't want Michael to leave the game. You know, Magic, Bird, myself. The way we had to leave the game, it was because of injuries and other reasons. And we don't want Michael to, to look back and turn around and want to do something that he loves so much and leave it too early. But I say I think the great players 
of the guys you just listed, you have to play it out because that that helps validate the next generation when they finally get to the point where they can beat you. When age and injury does catch up, then it says, okay, now we see these new guys and they really do have it. Jordan was fouled, taking it to the hole. He'll be at the line when we come back. Two and a half minutes to play. Now, Michael, this is the first time, uh, Bob, excuse me, this is the first time that Michael Jordan has Michael played Jordan. for Larry Bird as a coach. And I asked Michael what his favorite memory of Larry Bird was. And he went back to the 63-point game in the 86 playoffs, Jordan's second year in the league. And Larry, who was the MVP at the time and the, and the champion, Larry got Michael guarding him in the low post. And Larry just eyes lit up and he said, I got a little one, I got a little one down here. And he said, give me the ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, give me the ball, give me the ball. Jordan comes out and Bird switches on to him. So Jordan starts hollering, hey, I got a big one. I got a big one out here. They just kept going the rest of the way on his way to 63 with Big Little. Michael Jordan just made one of two. The first one he shot conventionally. The second one, you were able to see, he did what he sometimes does in a game that's a blowout or a game like this, the All-Star game, which is both an exhibition and a blowout, as it turns out, 128 to 106. He shot the second one with his eyes closed and missed it. Steve Smith off with a three. Jason Kidd with the world's longest tap attempt from about 10 feet. Here's Garnett. But Jordan's the type of guy that even though he shot it with his eyes closed, he's mad that he missed it. But look what George Carl's got out here for the West right now. You're talking all the young guys. Van Exel, Eddie Jones, Kevin Garnett, Jason Kidd, Tim Duncan. Smith missing the three. Bounds, 139 to play. East by 20. This is the second foul shot by Michael. Eyes closed and it's off left. Oh no. And he's probably mad that he missed it. But what the young guys should do is take advice from the older guys. See one of the older guys out. When I came to my first All-Star game, I saw Kareem out to ask Kareem, how do I handle my career? How do I go about being a champion? The one thing that Kareem told me when I first came into the league as a rookie was Isaiah, stay grounded and stay humble. And that was the best advice that I ever got in an All-Star game. Eddie Jones slices through. Jones. 13 for him. The guy that was my mentor coming up, Glenn Rice, was Steve Jones. Steve now at the cyberspace. The snapper. Absolutely. Steve Smith gets the basket on the follow. So Isaiah, who's your pick for MVP? Michael Jordan. It, it, it has to be Jordan. His team won. He's the leading scorer. And this is what the young players got to learn. Even though you come out and you put on the show and you entertain the fans, the bottom line is you still have to win, and you got to win the championship to be considered one of the greatest ever. A rainbow three from Glenn Rice. But Jordan came out and set the tempo early. The first drive in the middle, get the team off to the lead, hit the jumpers, while all the hype and everything and the spectacular plays went to Kobe. Michael leading the team to victory with the discipline, with the fundamentals, which, which and the conditioning. I think the conditioning of Jordan is so often overlooked. He works so hard at being at the top. Uh, Eddie Jones with it as we play out the final seconds. Van Exel, an unguarded three, way off. Kemp firing ahead for Smith. He'll take it. Now, Wait. both of those guys play every summer against each other at St. Cecilia Recreation League. Kevin Garnett missing, but considering it's just the final seconds of an All-Star game, he can say, as he does in those commercials, that it was tastefully done. And if I'm all these young guys right now, knowing that this may be Michael Jordan's last game, I'm running to ask him for his gym shoes and will he sign them for me? Go for the jersey, forget the shoes. Kobe over to congratulate Michael. He's looking for him. There they are. And this may be as close to a torch passing as we'll see. There's always the possibility that the Lakers and Bulls could be in the finals. But this might be the last time we see Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan on the floor at the same time. The teams have played their two regular season games already. They split them. The Bulls won in Chicago. Lakers won last week at the Forum. And if they don't beat in the finals, and if, despite everyone's pleas to the contrary, this is it for Michael Jordan, then this is where the torch was passed. Well, 
watching all the players come up and hug Michael Jordan and give him the type of respect and the love that he deserves. It would be sad to see him leave the game and not be able to continue to pass on his wisdom and his knowledge to these younger players and teach them how to be professionals and teach them how to win championships and understand the whole entertainment package of what the fans and what basketball is really all about. You know, that last part might be the most important. The wisdom and the knowledge are certainly key. But I think the main thing to everybody watching tonight and through all the years, they just love to watch this guy perform, and they don't want it to end before it has to. And I think the way it's going to play out, Bob, and the way it should play out is that go through the season. This knock off all the talk about what's going to happen next year. Finish this season, and then when it's over, sit down and say, okay, now what do we do? Well, I think the most important question and the follow-up on that bill is, what does the Bulls organization do? Because here's a young man, an old man, young man, veteran <laughs> player, who loves the game of basketball and still wants to play. Well, let's go to Jim Gray with the young man, Kobe Bryant, who led the West with 18. Jordan's 23 was tops in the game. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Bob. Well, Kobe, you didn't get back in the game the last 18 minutes. And George Carl iced you a little bit. Were you disappointed? No, not really. Uh, I just like to come out here and have some fun. I had my fun, and I was able to rest a little bit. Now, this, uh, Eric, uh, this experience, how much fun was it for you? It was incredible. It was incredible. I mean, I was matched up with Mike, and we had a chance to go head to head a little bit. It was incredible. Now, Michael Jordan has indicated that this might be his last year. How big of a disappointment would that be for you, and how much more can you learn from him? Well, you can never stop learning. And uh, you know, Mike, every time I play against Mike, I learn something new. Uh, disappointed, I don't know, because he, you know, without him, I wouldn't be here right now. So. What did you learn tonight? What was the new thing you learned from him tonight? Well, I can't tell you that. I got to keep all that to myself. For all the future basketball players out there who are coming out of high school, can't give up my secrets. You embraced each other. Did he say anything to you? And has the torch kind of been passed tonight? I don't know. I don't know. I think we just you know, went out, played hard, competed a little bit. Uh, they say keep up the hard work. Now, Magic Johnson said that they want to bring you along slowly, and Del Harris has tried to do that. Did that task just become a little bit more difficult after today's game? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to, to you, Kobe. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you many more years. All right, let's go to Ahmad Rashad, who has the MVP. Ahmad? All right, it is now time to make the presentation for this year's All-Star Game Most Valuable Player. And to make that presentation, here's the commissioner of the NBA, Mr. David Stern. We lost. Thank you. <laughs> There's one star who is the star of stars tonight amongst the greatest athletes in the world. I'm only going to allow him to have his trophy if he promises to come back and do it again. <laughs> the all-star of all-stars, the MVP, Michael Jordan. And to help me make the presentation, I'm going to ask Jack Greenberg, the chairman and CEO of McDonald's USA, to say a few words. Well, Michael, as the proud sponsor of uh, the NBA All-Star Balloting this year again, it is McDonald's great pleasure to award you the McDonald's MVP award. You are fantastic. On behalf of all the owner-operators across America of McDonald's, we say congratulations. This really makes a great deal of sense. You have been such a great friend and role model for McDonald's, for the sport, and the country. We love you, and congratulations. All right, Michael, knowing how much you love playing here in New York, this has to be special for you to win it here in New York. It is special. Uh, I've had some great games here. Uh, the fans have always treated me with the utmost respect. I think uh, to come back here and play in front of the fans here means a lot. This is basketball mecca, and I've enjoyed playing here, and I look forward to hopefully coming back one day. Oh, oh was that a hedge? <laughs> <laughs> so for all the fans here, and I'm sure all the fans at home, don't leave. Come on back and play again. Well, I will. I don't have a problem coming back. Honorary, I don't have a problem. All right. Congratulations, Michael. All right. Let's go over to you, Bob. Well, just in case you missed that word, 
He's not committing to anything because he said, honorary, I don't have a problem. I'm perhaps thinking about the way Magic Johnson played in the 92 All-Star game. So he is not prepared to say that he'll come back and play a full season again next year and won't apparently do it unless it's under the terms that he's willing to accept. Well, the love is in his heart for the game, and it's a shame that he can't continue to play for the team and the organization that he loved in terms of the Chicago Bulls. And it would be a tragedy if they break that team up and move Phil Jackson on. I was impressed by the fact that all 23 other players stayed on the court and watched the ceremony. In the past, they've all just raced to the locker room, and they know that Michael Jordan is the reason that they have the greatest lives that anybody could possibly have. The final score, which seems <laughs> quite secondary, was 135 to 114 East. They led all the way. They never trailed. Grant Hill is with Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much, Bob. Grant, kind of tough to get the basketball with the Michael Jordan in the game, but you played very well. What's it like to be on the court with you? First of all, I don't mind the Mike shoes all the time. Uh, it's a pleasure to play with him, even though he's a tar here. Um, but now it's fun to go out here and play uh, with these great players. You know, a great environment here in New York, All Star Game. Uh, you know, I had fun, and I, now I got to go back to Detroit and have some fun there. Do you feel as though he will return? What's your gut feeling? Has he said anything in the locker room? Do you have any sense? You know, I, I think he's going to come back. You know, I think he's still able to dominate. He's still leading the league in scoring. He's still making the spectacular plays. Uh, I, I think he'll come back. He's still it's a lot of money, so I think he'll come back. But now he, he don't need the money. I think he just loves to play, and uh, I hope he comes back. Congratulations on the victory tonight, Grant. All right, thank you very much. All right, let's go back to Ahmad Rashad with Michael Jordan. All right, Michael, now this, you've played in so many of these games, and they have their own rhythms about it. What was special about this one today? Well, being here at Madison Square Garden means a lot. I mean, it's basketball mecca, you know, I, and I enjoy playing here. I think the fans here are very up to understanding the game, and, you know, for me to come in here and, to play as hard as I play and, and get the respect of these fans, that means a lot to me. Was it a little lonely being without some of the stars that you played <laughs> in this game before? Charles wasn't here, Clyde not here. The you know, first thing we said to each other, Carl and I, we're the two oldest guys here. <laughs> you know, and things have changed. I remember when we were the two youngest guys here. And, you know, uh, Sean Kemp said, boy, it's pretty quiet with Charles Barker not being around. So, I mean, everybody could tell that, you know, times are changing. Some of the old guys are starting to move along and let some of the young guys come in. So, I mean, it's starting to change. Can you compare this to your first experience in an All-Star game? No, it's different. It's the other end of the spectrum. You know, I mean, when I first came here, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect playing in an All-Star game. I just wanted to fit in. Now, I know what to expect, and I'm, I'm just trying to fight off all the young guys. So now that this is over with, you got to gear up for the second half of the season. A little bit of turmoil in Chicago. How do you look at that? How do you guys get together and go, go for that next championship? Hey, we block all that stuff out, you know. And if it is true, I mean, this is the last time we go around together, and, and we use that to our momentum. And you know, hopefully, we can go out there and, and, and focus on the basketball game and forget about all the other stuff. You know, once we're on the basketball court, it's all basketball anyway. All right, congratulations, man. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday on it. Let me see. Back to you, Bob. All right, Ahmad, thanks. This was Michael Jordan's third All-Star MVP award. Ties Oscar Robertson with three, one behind the all-time leader, Bob Pettit of the St. Louis Hawks, who won it four times. We'll be back to Madison Square Garden to wrap things up after this 48th NBA All-Star game in just a moment.